All right, today on my time tunnel, we're playing around with a 20 year old telescope. Some may get upset that I call this a cheap telescope. It kind of is. I mean, brand new, they, they, they were a bit. They were probably about $300. Um, I would never pay that for this telescope. It is absolutely garbage. <laughs> I mean, this focuser here is all plastic. Um, and uh, the lenses they give you with it is absolutely garbage and we'll go over that and I'll show you though that you can actually get a pretty good shot with this telescope. So if you actually pick one up like I did, I paid like 75 bucks for this thing about 10 years ago. It's probably a 20 year old telescope. Got all this flash on there. It's really got some stuff to make you think it's something else. The multi-coated mirror is pretty good. Um, this focuser just ain't very good. The uh, the finder, the viewfinder there is absolute garbage, <laughs> but it works. If you want to take out and just look at the moon, this is an okay telescope just for what we're going to attempt today. Of course, it got this fine, and that's the stuff that makes you think it's really cool until it does that. Crunch, crunch. They're great for stripping out gears or looking cool like that. It's very impressive when you see it working, but it really ain't. <laughs> and we'll go over why. Um, really, I wish I had just the, the average hand controls because when you get out here in the middle of the dark with this, all this stuff, it really becomes a pain in the butt. It does. So if you got, if you got a chance to get anything but the electric one, electronic one like this, computerized, do it. I like the manual controls a lot more for, um, for moon watching. But overall, I mean, this is an okay telescope for jumping out, getting good shots of the moon. But you, you might get a come out here and um, take, your, take your moon shots and be very disappointed because the eyepieces and everything it takes to get a good shot of the moon. So I had about $75 into this telescope when I bought it. I bought it used off Craigslist. Honestly, I wouldn't give probably $50 for it now. <laughs> <laughs> After dealing with it and knowing there's much better, um, I would never pay $300 a new price for it. Um, no way. <laughs> but um, it's not bad. If you get one for $50 to $100, you're not hurting yourself. You could probably go out and use it and get some pretty neat shots. And I'm going to show you how to do that with this telescope in case you maybe you already overpaid for it. Maybe you underpaid. Either way, I'm going to show you how to set it up get some good shots on the moon. Anyways, this is the kind of eyepiece they usually give you with these telescopes. This is absolutely junk. Um, and could be very discouraging if you take these eyepieces out to go view for it. Look how tiny the hole is. Very small, very hard to see through. When you do finally see it, you might or might not get a good image. You can tell it's very dirty because I don't care about it. Um, if you notice, it says H for Hugen, 24, 25 millimeter. Um, the H for Hugen. Hugen's an old style eyepiece. Um, they still make them today and they, they make some nice Hugens, but this is not a nice Hugen. It does work, but it's absolutely crap. <laughs> and uh, uh, usually most uh, telescopes will not come with good eyepieces. They just won't. The good eyepieces is something that really costs. And usually every guy who owns telescopes is gonna keep all their good eyepieces for their next new telescope. Cause all these eyepieces can be used and all of them have different um, takes and some people like how some view or how they look better than the others. So they all got uh, um, goods and bads. So um, I'm gonna go over a, a pretty good eyepiece for you that would make this scope quite usable and not cost you too much of a fortune. Eyepieces is where it gets expensive. These things is where it gets expensive in the scope world. It's all about the eyepiece. Focuser is very important, but this is a plastic focuser and it's okay for shooting the moon. But it's not good if you start hanging a bunch of heavy glass and a camera off of it and all that kind of stuff. But it's decent for what we're, I'm gonna show you how to do with it. Um, pretty decent. First thing you might find out with uh, going from an old scope to new scope is that you might have to replace this. I had to buy a bigger, bigger one uh, the the standard is 1.25 now they got a two inch that came with this but nobody's gonna buy a two inch eyepiece for this telescope it's just not worth it um, this is like 0.9 something um, for this little cheesy eyepiece 
and um, you definitely have to upgrade this if you want a decent uh, eyepiece or the zoom eyepiece we're going to go through here in a second. And this is the big sweetheart of my setup. Notice how big that eye hole is now. <laughs> um, this zoom eyepiece will help you not have to have so many eyepieces, especially for a cheap telescope. This is a great bang for the buck. This was about 80 some dollars. Um, this is made by Celestion. It's a very nice zoom eyepiece. It does the job very good. It goes from 24 to eight millimeter. Gives you a heck of a zoom. Um, and it's a quality eyepiece and it does really good shots and I'll show you here in a bit what kind of shots it can do. As you can see that's where the focuser that I replaced is. You can buy these on eBay for your telescope. Just look up your telescope. Usually all these made in China, Taiwan things um, like this um, all got the same kind of focuser. They're all pretty much built the same. Different companies names slapped on them. Um, that's pretty much what this thing is. <laughs> As you can see, designed and specifications. That means me did not make this. <laughs> but it, it's okay. If we're looking at the moon and the kind of stuff we're going to do, just fine. Especially if you can pick one up off Craigslist for, like, say, $50. The, the eyepieces are where you get serious at. This eyepiece is not too serious where a break of bank. I mean... So you might have, you know, $80 in this eyepiece and um, $50 in the scope, which ain't bad for getting you out there to look at the moon really closely. And I'll go over a couple other things here in a minute. Now this is another nice little piece I got for it. This is pretty much a magnifier. Three times, it will magnify the power of that and whatever I set it in. It's pretty much what they call a Barlow. Um, watch out for the cheap Barlows made out of plastic. They are absolutely garbage. Um, they'll have a nice big, you'll see these long plastic things that one, mine came with one. You couldn't see nothing out of it. It was absolutely just a blur fest. <laughs> it was a dark image crap fest. That's what it was. This will give you a little darker image, but this is a decent focuser. Um, I paid like, I think 25 or 30 bucks for this. Um, I did it just because once in a while I might try to go a little farther and reach way out there and get some star action. Now, this is the Ghost Guy cell mount. This will help you mount your cell phone um, to whatever, um, to this scope or whatever scope you want to. Um, it's got adjustable and it's got the hole there, the peephole, and we'll show that you make sure to order the right Ghost Guy for the right phone. They got ones that'll show you which ones fit the right cell phone. Mine's a... Uh, uh, 2020 Motorola and we'll uh, we'll go through how it fits on there and take shots of the moon and that's how the ghost guy goes on your phone or how are your phone set up it's made so it can move around and get to whichever uh, lens you want to try on it you can try all sorts of different ones whatever works best through the eyepiece I'm just using the, the standard one of course and you lock it down and be careful when you lock it down these screws are plastic some of it is metal but I would be careful these are not um, the toughest built for 20 some bucks, but they're not bad. It's not a bad unit. It's really good for the price, especially for any kind of phone mount. And basically, you pull off the rubber piece off the top of your deal there. And one thing I would do is look, if you got, um, if you got, um, oops, um, glasses like I do, is I would look through that, focus the moon nice and sharp with these, you focus the moon in nice and sharp to where it looks sharp then attach your phone because then it'll your phone will be easier to um, get a nice 2020 shot of it because um, if you sh if you focus it on 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 bad eyesight um, this can really focus really good you can actually use this without your glasses it's very comfortable you can use it with your glasses it's a little harder to use but if you're gonna take shots like me definitely do what I do <laughs> is a uh, Get in there and look at the moon and make sure you focus it in before you attach this little Jasper. Now you, you can attach this anywhere like this, basically. And I'll have to put down my camera just to do it because, um, just to tighten it in, but pretty much you tighten that screw and that's it. It works pretty good. I mean, I'm here in the daytime, I'll show you some of the actual footage that I've took with this phone and pictures I've took with this, this whole setup here on this video. 
I've had a lot of people ask me and how I how I take my shots so I decided to do a little video to show because uh, you know there's only so much explaining uh, you can do without taking people out and showing them can't show everybody at the same moment so this is how to shoot the moon with a budget telescope on a budget <laughs> you know this is a seems like a very complex setup compared to what me and my dad used to get we used to get those cheap tascos like you get over there at, in a you know kb toy store or whatever and we'd go out in the backyard and have a great time looking at the moon on on a pretty poor telescope <laughs> so really this seems like a pretty good upgrade compared to what we used to use and um it's not bad it's not bad but don't go out thinking you're gonna see uh, uh every star that comes up and all that kind of stuff no it's it's limited it is limited it will see out there i, I saw saturn with it with my dad and uh that was pretty neat that was the first time i seen the rings of saturn was with this very telescope it will get out there and see some planet watching all right and it can do that that's why i bought the magnifier if you live in a clear place get a nice clear shot you can get some really neat shots with even this setup this here is another very important item you need to get for this setup now i bought it with my ghost guy in a in a package deal 24 bucks i think with the the ghost guy mount and this trigger for my cell phone this trigger is a must have for this <laughs> trust me you don't want to be tapping on that screen and you can see it shakes you don't want to be tapping on that screen and have this thing shake when you get a nice awesome picture you could lose a shot of a of a lifetime matter of fact if it wasn't for this i wouldn't have caught this shot i'm going to show you here in a second of a of a jet i plugged this thing in and was out here not far from here and was getting ready to take some shots of the moon and plugged it in turned it on and there was a jet flying right into the view so that's kind of neat um, if it wasn't for the, having this trigger already plugged in i would have missed it completely there's no way i could have caught it caught this shot Um, the electronics and stuff are a pain in the butt. The thing takes 10 batteries to run. Um, I wish I would have just got the regular one. So if you get a chance, stay away from the computerized one, I would. But if you get one real cheap like I did, get it. It does work. And it does impress people with its movements and stuff. But really, all these stuff like to strip out and all that fun stuff. So really, I would get the manual, manual one. This is shooting the moon with a cheap telescope. Hope you enjoyed. Hope it uh, showed you a couple things you might learn on. And um, you can't go wrong. This setup is cheap, not gonna break the budget. Um, you can go out, this is a great one for going out in the yard and just trying to take a nice long shot and see what you can see. Um, I like it, it's, it's fun, it is fun. But I'm definitely gonna be looking for a better scope I've had this for quite a while and I finally upgraded to the point where it's actually usable now. Um, like I said at first, wasn't very usable, wasn't very fun. You go out with those poor eyepieces, you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy watching the stars. <laughs>